Here yes, we are. No. So we're live okay. here in Fremantle. Oh, okay. um, Tim Darby, could you please introduce yourself? Tell us a bit about who yeah. you are and what we've got in front of us. Um, I'm Tim Darby. Um, I live at a property called Eco Verbia, which is a sort of experimental urban infill. And um, I've just been asked to chat about um, my sand sculpture, which is um, uh, something that I do every year on the street. I do a sand sculpture sort of as a Christmas present for the street. It's kind of like Christmas lights without the lights. And um, in this case, what I've chosen to do is uh, a pyramid of penguins. Um, we were just in Europe and uh, it was our first overseas flight in 20 years and while we were there the IPCC released its report on climate change so I felt pretty guilty and um, yeah I just wanted to make a comment really on the way that we think about climate change and how much we ignore it hence I've got the penguins balancing on the last tiny little bit of melting ice cap and uh, they're reading the IPCC report um, with various degrees of enthusiasm and hope and praying and you know some wise some not so yeah that's all it was really and the funny thing is I assumed when I wrote IPCC report everyone would go oh, yeah it's you know that's what it's about and so I was talking to Shani my girlfriend and I was saying uh, maybe I should put up a little sign explaining what it is and she said no no everyone gets the IPCC but it turned out not everyone does. So it just goes to show how much of a bubble you can live in. You assume that everyone knows what you're talking about. It's kind of on the same page. And what impact has the sculpture had? Have you had a lot of engagement? I've had heaps of people coming past, actually, while I was working on it and afterwards. And um, it's been really good. I mean, I really like the way that sand sculpture's kind of thin edge of the wedge community engagement, a bit like our book exchange, which um, has just been finished now. You know, kind of a piece of art and at the same time it functions to people to drop off their books and pick up other books. And we're sort of trying to create with some chairs as well a little spot where um, people can converge because this is quite a busy street. Um, it doesn't tend to be a piece, place where people hang on the street so we're trying to create one of those a little bit. Um, that's where our goats browse, graze in the morning. Um, but yeah, yesterday we had some classes for kids who so wanted to come and learn a little bit about sand sculpture and that worked really well when the kids stopped there everyone else stops as well and we have had heaps of people um, taking photos and stopping to chat and um, you know I think I think it gives people some cause for thought while at the same time being a little bit humorous and not too kind of uh, in your face or too critical. How long did it take you to make the sculpture or when did you put it up? It took way longer than it should have done because the first, <laughs> the first time I made it, it fell down. Um, yeah, so I'm always with the sand trying to push the parameters a bit. It's quite tall and quite thin and I got to the point where it collapsed and I had to rebuild it. But it probably took about five days to build all up, including the collapse and the rebuild. And um, all things being equal, it'll still be there in a couple of months. The sand's really fragile when you're building it but once the clay and the sand hardens up they can last for ages. I did one down at Little Creatures a while ago and I had to take it out with a sledgehammer once it hardens up it goes really hard which is kind of good too we don't get a lot of vandalism around here but the last one somebody gave it a punch and hurt their fist because it was so hard. So is it sand mixed with something like that? No it's just bricky sand right. um, so it's got a coarse sand with a bit of clay in it that's how they um, take it out the ground it's amazing what you can do with it. The other thing I really like about it is you have a pile of sand and then you have a sculpture and then you have another pile of sand which turns into another sculpture. I think so last really year I had one lot of sand that I used for six or seven different sculptures and then we used it for bricklaying. So, you know, as a sustainability practitioner slash artist, it's kind of really good form to work with. Fantastic. So just, you know, thinking of people watching this uh, broadcast, message would you like to get out to people? Oh, just take notice and take action. Really. We just screened a movie the other night called uh, The Reluctant Radical <clears throat> about a guy who'd been working for years trying to get change on climate change and eventually decided to just go for a bit of monkey wrenching and take direct action. 
Not even because he felt that by himself he could change anything, but just because climate change is such a huge, pressing, devastating, all-encompassing issue, he didn't even feel that taking direct action was going to change anything, but he said, I have to do everything I can do. Um, yeah. And I don't think we do. I think we, a little bit like I was saying, oh yes, everyone knows about climate change, that's the bubble that I live in. And I think perhaps the vast majority of people live in a different bubble that says, ah, climate change, the scientists will fix it, ah, you know, we all like to insulate ourselves from discomfort. And one of my ways of insulating myself is to think that everyone cares and is taking action. So this art is about trying to ensure that is actually the case more widely. Oh, you know, I count myself as hopeful but doubtful. And if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? They can either Google Eco Burbia, as in Eco for the suburbs, or uh, Sand Sculpture WA. So we're kind of two businesses, a sand sculpture business and an environmental education business. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you very much for speaking with us, random thank you. people on the street. Thank you but, for your uh, interest and thanks you for you. spreading my idea to even more people. That's fantastic. Great.